Ahoy there, Captain Benzi here, coming at you with another video for EVE Echoes. In today's video, we're going to be discussing some of the changes that have been made on the May update balance patch test server. That's a bit of a mouthful to say, but there we go. Obviously, you guys know that I've had a bit of a mixed bag of emotions in regards to these particular changes, especially in regards to destroyers and frigates. So today's video, as uncomfortable as this is for me, I feel is a conversation we need to have. I don't like being negative. I don't like talking about problems and that in my content when I can help it. But I feel that this is such a big issue and it's one that's weighing on me so personally that I kind of need to vent. I need to get it out there and I need to explain what the problems are and most importantly, how they can still be solved. I love Eve Echoes. Things have been difficult, as I said for me personally, especially with how Reddit and certain discords have been behaving lately and there's been a lot of heat thrown my way. Um, plus then having this balance patch on top being a little bit underwhelming, plus now having um, exploration pushed back a month so that they can actually go in and fix this patch. It's been a bit of a perfect storm of situation, so it's time for me to sit down and talk in as constructive a manner as possible about what I think needs to be done going forward on this one. So please, if you enjoy this video, help me out, hit like on it, let me know that you're still enjoying this game, and tell me what you're having most fun with in the comment section down below. If you agree with me, let's have a conversation about this and get it all sorted. And if you do agree with me, of course, let's take it a little bit further, take it to the developers, and make sure that our voices are all heard so that we can go forward together with Eve Echoes and make this an even better game. Now, whilst I will, of course, jump into all four of the Empire ship trees in this video in order to make this point and to showcase it, I will start off with the Minmata Republic. This will be the main focus of the video. I will then use the other three ship trees to showcase, basically, uh, and to evidence what I've talked about here in the Minmata ship tree. Now, I suggest the Minmata ship tree is the best focus for this discussion, simply because A, I believe it's the most problematic with how it interacts with its faction frigate, and secondly, it's my personal favourite, so I'm speaking here from a point of sort of personal opinion, plus I've got all of the sort of the backup here. I fly mainly Minmatar ships. I do fly every single frigate and destroyer in EVE Echoes, um, but Minmatar have always been my favourite, thus they're the ones I feel most qualified to give an emphatic point from. Anyway, we're going to start with destroyers first of all. Now, destroyers are an interesting th situation in general in EVE Echoes, and I will say now that the additional speed and that that they've given to destroyers still is not enough. I still stand by my previous uh, suggestion that the speed increase is a good thing. I'm glad they've given that, but they need the additional high slots. Every destroyer from Tech 4 upwards needs additional high slots. It is just that simple. Anyway, your destroyers have two separate lines. You've got your turret, gunboat, and you've got your missile boat. And then both of those then follow through in different branches in their respective trees. So for the turrets, we have the thrasher at tech level 3, following into the thrasher 2 at tech level 4. At tech level 5, we get the fleet issue, or the navy issue for the coercer, catalyst, and cormorant. Then we have the guardian at tech level 5. And then at tech level 6, we have the interdictor. Now, once you've got the interdictor, you have now experienced everything that the thrasher line has to offer. Com contrast this to the Talwar. At Tech 4, we get the Trainer and the standard, is uh, standard issue Talwar. Then up at Tech Level 6, we get the Talwar Sniper, which is a very different ship. At Tech Level 7, we get the Talwar Assault. At Tech Level 8, we get the Talwar C, the Command Talwar, as it will be renamed. And then finally up at Tech Level 10, we get the Talwar 2 Assault. And I will make it a brief aside here. These Tech Level 10 Assault boats are actually pretty good. These are what destroyers should be. They've got the additional high slot, though again, I'd like to see this actually go up to 6, if not 7 high slots, with some of the uh, stats changed a little bit to, to back that up, um, so that it doesn't become absolutely insane. And give basically, the Talwar 2 Assault is what the Talwar Assault should have been. It's, it's that simple. The Talwar 2 Assault, I'm still not convinced, stands up as a Tech 10 ship, but more on that later, we're talking about Thrashers. The point is, once you've hit Tech Level 6 with the Thrasher, you've seen everything this line has to offer. At Tech Level 9, you get the Thrasher 2 Interdictor, which is the Thrasher Interdictor, but slightly better. And then the Tech Level 10, you get the Thrasher 3 Interdictor, which again, it's the same thing, slightly better. Let's actually look at these in a comparison side-by-side -side view, which we can now do thanks to the wonders of recent updates. So start off with the Thrasher and the Thrasher 2 Interdictor. You'll see that looking at their fitting profile, the only difference here is the rig slots and the mid slots. 
Once we get the Thrasher 2 interdictor, we've got a nice profile of four mid slots, four low slots, and three of each of the rigs. Yes, okay, we can talk until the cows come home about the two high slots and how pitiful that actually is. These are not good ships anymore. They are definitely fleet support ships, support in the strictest sense of the word. As a brief aside, just before we go any further, let's go down to the Guardian Thrasher. You'll notice that even the Thrasher Guardian has three high slots. The Interdictors don't even get the three high slots. They've been dropped all the way down to the two high slots, which is just heartbreaking. But hey, let's have a look at the other differences. So the roll bonuses are the same, 25% small cannon optimal range and can fit Interdiction Sphere launchers. Um, we then get the um, uh, Interdiction Sphere Launcher flight time, so how long the bubbles last in space, and a bit of small cannon damage. But again, we've got two high slots. that We, we don't care about small cannon damage at this point. It is purely a, a, an extra. It's kind of icing on the cake, and it's a cake that is made up of just not nice things, not things that you like. Basically, looking at the Thrasher Interdictor and the Thrasher 2 Interdictor, two small cannons with an additional 60% small cannon damage just is not enough. It doesn't do anything there. Full training, it just doesn't do anything anything. 60% additional damage on two high slots gives you maybe three cannons worth of damage. It's nothing. It's pathetic, and it's not why you're ever going to use this ship. Once we get up to the Tech 10 variant, what's the difference? They're, they're the same fitting profile, they're the same small cannon optimal range, oh, we, we get bigger interdiction bubbles, but the damage remains the same. And okay, we're slightly faster, and we've got a slightly smaller signature radius and things like that, but Basically, the only difference between the Thrasher 3 Interdictor and the Thrasher 2 Interdictor is that the uh, the bubbles sit in space for a, a little bit longer. That's literally it. Like, there is no one, there is no one in EVE Echoes right now looking at the Thrasher, who's flying a Thrasher 2 Interdictor, who is happy that they've lost the two high slots, and then simultaneously excited that they're getting a Thrasher 3 Interdictor. The Thrasher 3 Interdictor is not as good in combat as the Thrasher 2 Interdictor, or even the Thrasher 1 Interdictor used to be. It is a terrible solo vessel, and all it does better now is it gets a little bit extra Interdictor Sphere launch time. Like, that's literally it. And in the process of getting this wonderful, exciting ship, we lost the Thrasher Covert Ops, the only Thrasher after tech level 5 that had any form of solo play potential. So, if you are a solo pilot, if you want to go PvPing or want to go ratting, what do you have in regards to Thrashers? Well, literally, your last good one is the Thrasher Fleet issue. That is the last solo Thrasher. And if you don't think that's a problem, I'm not sure what to say. This, of course, is true for the Coerce or the Catalyst and the Cormorant as well, but hey, there we go. So, why is this a problem? Because, as I said, we've yes, okay, we've got like the Talwar Sniper, the Talwar Assault, the Talwar 2 Assault, etc. And I've conceded they're not bad ships. The trouble is, if you're a small cannon pilot, what do you do after Tech Level 6? Because Tech Level 6, uh, Tech Level 5, sorry, you've got your Thrasher Fleet issue. Tech Level 6, you have a Healing Frigate, a Missile Frigate, a Interdictor, that is nothing to do with your cannon damage, and a Talwar Sniper, a Missile Boat. Then we have a missile frigate and a missile boat. Then we have an interceptor that uses cannons. There's your first ship after the Thrasher, um, Thrasher fleet issue, that is a cannon ship designed for combat. We then have another missile ship. We then have another interdictor that's not a combat ship, followed by another missile frigate. Once we hit tech level 10, we've got a missile uh, destroyer, a terrible interdictor, a another missile frigate, an exploration frigate, and suddenly the Slasher 2 interceptor. So by the time you hit tech level 10, you've had two additional cannon ships. You've literally gone from the Talwar, uh, sorry, the Thrasher fleet issue at tech level 5, then probably into the Slasher Interceptor at tech level 8, and then into the Slasher 2 Interceptor at tech level 10. And forgive me if I'm not overjoyed with that abundance of exciting choice. We're already talking about how the uh, the Interceptor frigates are just too good. They absolutely outclass every single other frigate in the game. And now, basically, if you're a small cannon pilot, the only ship you're going to be flying at Tech Level 10 is a Slasher 2 Interceptor. And let's add this one to comparisons. Then we're going to jump across to the Angel Cartel tree and have a look at the cannon faction frigate, the Dromiel. Because this is where things get really quite depressing. 
the the slot arrangement for these is exactly the same. Three highs, three mids, three lows, three power grid rigs, sorry, three combat rigs and three engineering rigs. We then, as we look down a little bit further, if we're looking at purely our damage stats, so small cannon tracking speed and small cannon damage, oh, would you look at that? Um, what do we have? We've got 10% small cannon damage on the Dramiel and 17.5% on the Slasher 2 Interceptor. We then have the same cannon tracking speed, so we've got the same kind of application, but the Slasher 2 Interceptor is doing critically more damage. Like, the, the Dromiel gets a 50% increase to its small cannon damage, whereas the Slasher 2 Interceptor gets an 87.5% increase to its small cannon damage. The only b advantages that the Dromiel has in regards to its, activation, uh, to its cannons are a faster activation time and accuracy falloff. Now, the small cannon accuracy falloff, I'm not going to lie, is pretty nice. It helps you if you need to maintain a slightly wider orbit. And the small cannon activation time, of course, that does go directly into DPS. But fun spoiler, f uh, spoiler alert here. 10% small cannon damage, 5% small cannon activation time is not as good as 17.5% small cannon damage. This works out better on the Slasher 2 Interceptor. What about the other stats though? Well, the Dromiel gets 50% warp speed, so it moves at 7.5% AUs per second. It reaches that warp speed a little bit faster, so that's uh, it's nice to have. It gets you from high sec to low sec better. Um, and we've got a damage control activation time of additional 5 seconds, which quite frankly is whoop de frickin' do, especially since compared to the damage control activation time there, the Slasher 2 Interceptor is immune to warp bubbles, so you can AFK pilot it through null sec and never have to worry about getting caught in a gate camp. Okay, cool, so that's a nice thing there for the Slasher 2 to have. It then gets better at optimal range on its Warp Disruptors and Warp Scramblers, and it gets the Micro, uh, the micro Warp Drive Signature Radius Penalty, a whopping 75% reduction there, which means you can speed tank with Micro Warp Drives if you absolutely decide that that's what you want to do. The crazy thing, though, is when we start looking down here, our basic info for the Dromiel, okay, it gets slightly better overall defense, but the flight velocity is considerably lower. The Slasher 2 Interceptor has a 5.5 AU warp speed compared to the Dromiel's effective 7.5, okay, bit slower. A little bit less power grid, not that it needs it, you're going to be running auto cannons and things. Capacitor banks, again, slightly lower, but again, you don't need it because you're running a ship that doesn't require capacitor banks. The cargo hold is bigger on the Slasher 2 Interceptor. And then things get worse when you look at the Dramiel and the Slasher 2 Interceptor in regards to the stats that it doesn't show here, most notably the signature radius. 20.6 meters is tiny, right? The Dromiel is supposed to be one of the hardest to hit ships in the entirety of EVE Echoes. But then let's jump up and have a look at the Slasher 2 Interceptor, because I sure hope it's not below the 20.5. It's 18.5, which is a considerable, considerable drop. We've also got an inertia of 1.0 uh, times and a mass of 1.075 kgs, which gives us a very good agility rating. In fact, let's actually use my on-screen calculator to calculate this one now. So, let's scroll that one back down, come in on the side here, add in the calculator. We are looking at, clear that off, 1075000, and we're going to times that by the 1.0. Oh look, it's 1.075000. Okay, let's keep that there. We're going to go back into the Dromiel, and we're going to have a look at the Dromiel's ag uh, agility rating by comparison. Let's so scroll back down, pull up the calculator again. So remember, it's 1,075,000. 1,075,000. So we've got 9,5,000. Times 1.6. 1.52. It's a bigger agility rating, which means it doesn't hold as tight an orbit and thus needs to slow down in order to do so. The Dromiel is categorically worse than the Interceptor Frigate. So yes, if you're a small cannon pilot at tech level 10, you are flying the Slasher 2 Interceptor and only the Slasher 2 Interceptor. It is your one frigate of choice, because everything else is either an exploration frigate, a missile boat, a missile boat, or a interdictor that literally nobody asked for. I don't get why we lost the Covert Ops Destroyers here. The Covert Ops Destroyers were the first combat uh, turret gunboat in the Destroyer line since Tech Level 5, and they're gone. Which means Tech Level 5 is where destroyers end as far as combat turret pilots go. You literally stop with your fleet or navy issue and that's it. And that makes me so, so sad. Really, really sad.
But looking then at the Talwar 2 assault, okay, let's add this to comparison and compare it to the frankly atrocious Talwar assault. Now, okay, yeah, the Talvar Assault got some buffs, I hear you cry. Yeah, it's got the additional third mid-slot that it absolutely needed to have, because you couldn't run everything that it needed and still have Tackle, which made it terrible for PvP. Or you were struggling to fit on, like, a Nosferatu to deal with the fact that the Talvar Assault's, um, its capacitor bank is frankly atrocious. But then NetEase, in all their wisdom, decided to take away a low slot, which just screws the Talvar Assault in a completely new direction. Like... It was four low slots was okay. That was the bare minimum that the Talwar Assault needed. Once you take away another low slot, it's now okay. Well, what? I've lost some tank, I've lost some DPS, or I've lost my propulsion. To, in order, you fixed one problem, but then created a whole new exciting one. The Talwar 2 Assault, however, not only gets the additional high slot that I've been crying for for months, it gets that additional mid slot and keeps the low slot. What else does it get, though? It's still got that same 25% missile torpedo velocity bonus, the same damage control activation time, it gets considerably better small missile torpedo damage, so it's getting an additional high slot and a massive amount of additional DPS straight from the skills. It then, otherwise, is pretty much the same. It gets the warp drive signature radius penalty, the stasis web fire optimal range, and a flight velocity increase. Now, it's already pretty nippy as far as destroyers go. I mean, heck, you can see that even with the boosts here to the Talwar Assault in this patch, 296 meters per second is still fairly slow compared to a lot of other ships. That's kind of now on par with the Stabber. The Talwar 2 Assault, yes, is now going faster, and it can theoretically go 10% additional faster on top of that if you have Advanced Destroyer Command trained up. It's also got a good amount of defense, which it needs. It's an Assault Destroyer, the clue is right there in the name. It's got a great amount of power grid. It's got a somewhat decent capacitor, still nowhere near where it needs to be. Nowhere near where it needs to be, that should literally be like 800 um, to count. And cargo hold that no one really cares about. The point is, we're finally getting a fifth mid slot, a fifth high slot, and we're getting 12.5% damage. Give the Talwar Assault that fifth slot, fifth high slot, and the fourth low slot. Every destroyer from tech level four or five upwards needs additional high slots. If it were up to me, I would st be sitting there going, well, okay, the Thrasher's got three, the Thrasher two gets four, so the Thrasher fleet issue gets five. That's how it should be. The Thrasher fleet issue needs five high slots. The Thrasher interdictor should go back to having four high slots. The uh, Talwar sniper, um, again, four or five high slots would work nicely. The Talwar assault, five high slots. It needs to have five by this point. The Talwar command has five. Why doesn't the Talwar assault? Then by the time we hit the th uh, Talwar two assault, that should be six high slots, at which point you're putting out a good amount of DPS for a destroyer, not enough that you're going to take out cruisers anytime soon because you're still big enough and easy enough to hit for the cruisers that they can take you out nice and quickly, but you suddenly pose a very real threat to frigates, which quite frankly are just going to be interceptor pilots at this time. So, I think I've made some fairly circular points there. I've proven, I've, I've talked a lot here about how if you're a small turret pilot here, the cannons just get screwed. By tech level 10, the only thing you're going to be flying that uses small cannons is a Slasher 2 Interceptor, which is categorically better than the Dramiel. You don't get any nice, exciting destroyers. We get a Thrasher 3 Interdictor, which no one asked for and no one needs, because the only real advantage it has over the 2 Interdictor is a few seconds extra of uh, its bubbles being in space. The Thrasher 2 Interdictor is perfectly capable of gate camping. You don't need a Thrasher 3 Interdictor. What we do need is a Thrasher 3. If we've got the Thrasher 1, and then that upgrades into the Thrasher 2, then we either need the Thrasher 3 or the Thrasher Fleet Issue 2. The Thrasher 2 Fleet Issue would be amazing. That is what we need in that top slot, if we don't just get the Thrasher Covert Ops back with some buffs, because that would work. The Thrasher Covert Ops was an exciting ship that was good fun to fly, so having that back there, I would be all for, or at least giving a Thrasher 2 Fleet Issue. And also, how can we lose our Guardian? We only have the tech level 5 Guardians. Where's our tech level 10 Guardian? Please, put that in there as well. What I would like to see here at the top line, in tech level 10, in the frigates, we have our Slasher 2 Interceptor that gets some heavy nerfs to its damage. It does not need 17.5% small cannon damage. We then need a Rifter Assault, or a Rifter 2, up here, which is going to have that damage on it. The Rifter is going to be slower than the Slasher, but it is going to deal more damage. That's how that should be, because then you have a meaningful choice of do you go for the Tackle Frigate that's hard to hit, or do you go for the one that is going to kick out damage? 
damage that is basically your assault frigate. So we need a rifter assault along with the slasher 2 interceptor receiving heavy nerfs. The Hound 3 is problematic for all kinds of crazy reasons. If you're interested in knowing more about this, Geeka Forta did a fantastic video talking about the problems with this. But the long and short of it is, yeah, we've got a fourth high slot. Fourth high slot's amazing for its damage, except it still can't hit anything. It, it, if it's still using large torpedoes in their current shape, then large torpedoes apply their damage like terribly. You cannot hit anything smaller than a citadel with large torpedoes and expect to do decent damage. Like, genuinely, even battleships don't take full damage from large torpedoes right now, which is a freaking stupid thing. So this, 100%, it's nice that it got that additional high slot, it's nice that it's smaller, it's nice that it's faster, etc, 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 but it 100%, 100%, 100% needs a reduction to the explosion velocity and, uh, sorry, a reduction to the explosion radius and an increase to the explosion velocity of large torpedoes. Like, it needs that more than it needs the flight velocity and that kind of thing there. So that would then be our four frigates here in the top slots. Once we're at 10, we then get rid of the Thrasher 3 Interdictor and bring back the Thrasher Covert Ops. We put in a Thrasher 2 Guardian and a Thrasher 2 Fleet Issue. And suddenly, that alongside the Talwar 2 Assault makes a great lineup for small ships. And let's have a look at that compared to the other Empire. So going to the opposite end of the spectrum, we have the Amar Empire, which again, the Executioner 2 Interceptor, which arguably, I would say, is better than the Succubus. For the simple reason that the Succubus is tanky as all heck, but who needs to be tanky when you can just not get hit in the first place? And again, it's got the Warp Disrupt Field immunity level, it's got mad amounts of laser damage, it's a very small ship, it's fast moving, it's got excellent agility, it is by far the best laser ship, um, small laser ship, in EVE Echoes. Once we're at tech level 10, again, we've got a crappy Coercer 3 Interdictor that nobody asked for. Our last Coercers that did anything interesting combat-wise was the Navy issue at tech level 5, followed by the Coercer Guardian. So again, what should we have here? We should have a heavily nerfed Executioner 2 Interceptor. We should have a Tormentor Assault. This absolutely gorgeous looking ship down here, there it is, the Tormentor, gets nothing. This is the only version of the Tormentor in EVE Echoes, and it's a Tech 2 frigate, so it's not very useful. That should be a Tech 10 Assault frigate. So we need the Tormentor 2, uh, to Tormentor Assault, sorry, here at Tech 10. We then have the Magnate Explorer, which is a pretty cool ship, and the Purifier 3, which again needs to have massive reductions to its torpedoes. It needs to have those torpedoes able to actually apply their damage. Increase to the explosion velocity, decrease to the explosion radius. Get rid of the Coercer 3 Interdictor that nobody asked for, give us a Coercer 2 Navy Issue, a Coercer 2 Guardian, and possibly even the Coercer Covert Ops, alongside the excellent Dragoon 2 Assault. This is genuinely one of my favourite destroyers in the game right now. I will probably do a video on this absolute beast later on. I hope this launches the way it does. It could still use some buffs, but it's just the most fun you can have in a destroyer currently in EVE Echoes. What about once we go to the Kaldari? Well, Kaldari, again, we have the same problem, but it's slightly different this time. This time around, if you want to be flying um, any form of small turrets, you're completely screwed from tech level 5. At tech level 5, we've got our Cormorant Guardian and our Cormorant Navy issue, after which, what do you have in regards to small railguns? Literally the Merlin Assault. That's it. Here we have the Bantam II, which is a healer. We have the Manticore, which is a stealth bomber. We have the Merlin Assault, which uses our turrets. We have the Condor, which uses missiles. We have the Manticore, which uses missiles. We have the Manticore III, which uses missiles. We have the Heron Explorer, which is an Explorer frigate. We have the Condor Interceptor, which uses missiles. We have the Core X2 that uses missiles. Everything is missiles or support. Like, it, it's an interdictor. You get, after the Cormorant Navy issue, you get the Cormorant Interdictor, which sucks as a combat ship, the Cormorant 2 Interdictor, which sucks as a combat ship, and the Cormorant 3 Interdictor, which once again sucks as a combat ship. These are excellent for doing their whole bubble thing, but no one needed another interdictor after the Interdictor 2. The two interdictors are fantastic at their job. You don't need another one. What we do need up here is something that uses small railguns that is actually useful. We need a Cormorant 
2 Navy issue and a Cormorant 2 Guardian, possibly alongside a Cormorant 2 Covert Ops. And over here, 100%, we need either a Merlin Assault 2, Merlin 2 Assault, or, I mean, heck, it's a tricky one here because the ship that theoretically should get a new one is the Kestrel. But that's another missile ship. So if we have the Kestrel Assault or the Kestrel 2 up at tech level 10, it's another missile ship. So we kind of need to move the Merlin. This needs to be one of those situations like we saw with the Maelstrom and Tempest swapping around. The Merlin Assault needs to come up to tech level 10 and get some significant buffs. And then we need to have an Orchestral Assault down at tech level 7. That would fix the Kaldari State's small ships. Finally then, we have the Galente Federation, which again, we have from tech level 5 upwards, nothing interesting in regards to the Catalyst. We've got the Catalyst Interdictor, Catalyst 2 Interdictor, and the Catalyst 3 Interdictor. At least the Galente do get a Railgun Frigate, but again, it's the Interceptor. So here, we need to keep the Interceptor, drop its stats right down um, to make it on par with everything else. We then bring up everyone's favourite Frigate, the Tristan. We need a Tristan 2, or a Tristan Assault, up at tech level 10. Because if you're a small drone pilot, you've got nothing in the frigates other than the basic Tristan, followed by eventually the Worm, which is a faction frigate. Nothing at tech level 10 for you. Admittedly, you do get the destroyers, and the destroyers are pretty awesome as far as drones go. Again, the Algos 2 Assault is a decent destroyer. This is how it should have been at tech level 7. The Algos 2 Assault is how the Algos Assault should have been. The Algos 2 Assault, I still feel, needs buffs. But again, if you're a small railgun pilot, you've got nothing in destroyers because the Catalyst 3 Interdictor is that ship that nobody asked for. Please get rid of it. Give us a Catalyst 2 Navy issue, a Catalyst 2 Guardian, and the Catalyst Covert Ops. We then have the Nemesis 3, which needs those uh, those changes to how its torpedoes work, and we have the Imacus Explorer alongside the Tristan Assault. So you'd have the, uh, the, the Atron 2 Interceptor, the Tristan Assault, the Imacus Explorer, the Nemesis 3, the Algos 2 Assault, the uh, Catalyst 2 Navy Issue, the Catalyst 2 Guardian, and the Catalyst Covert Ops. That, to me, would fix our small ships. We would have some fun with those at Tech Level 10. Right now, Tech Level 10 is three months away. It's just, uh, just under 90 days for me personally, and I could not be less excited for it. Like, there is nothing at Tech Level 10 that excites me right now other than possibly the, uh, the two Assault Destroyers, but that requires me playing around with my skills a lot before we reach that point, and the Explorer Frigates. I'm looking forward to Exploration, which sadly has been pushed back to June. I get that it needs to be pushed back because the response to this patch has been so overwhelming that the developers are like, okay, we've got a lot of changes we need to make, which I'm, I'm kind of glad. I'm glad that the developers have pushed it back because they've said, right, okay, we've got a lot of work to do to make this patch fly. Yeah, they really do have a lot of work. It's just sad that the content creators in the content creator channel, plus all the feedback that the developers have been receiving in the Discord and things like that, basically should have told them that this patch should never have even been proposed. The stuff that is in this patch should never have been talked about. It looks like we are going to get some of it undone, but the cost of that is that we've got exploration being pushed back a month. Okay, it's only a month. It's only a month. I'm not you know, hugely torn on that. But we should just never have reached this position. We've been talking about how there are, how destroyers need buffs. We've been giving evidence for how destroyers need buffs, and it's been completely ignored and changed and given us this. So I'm glad it's getting fixed. I'm sad that it means we have an extra month before exploration, but heck, if it means we actually get workable small ships, I'll be super happy. And yes, I'm also aware that once we hit railguns um, at cruiser level, we also hit that same situation there where there are no good railgun cruisers at tech level 10. I've been talking with um, Exile recently um, and have supplied a list of stuff like that as well, because it's also noteworthy that the last time we had any Ewar frigates was at tech level 4, here with the Vigil, the Crucifier, the Maulus, and the Griffin. 
We know that there is an E-War version of each of those in the game files at tech level 6. We're not getting those added. And again, tech level 10, that would be a nice thing to have. I'd love to have a Crucifier 2 at tech level 10, a Vigil 2, all of these. I think the frigates, there should be six blasted frigates at tech level 10. We should have our Exploration Frigate. We should have our, in uh, our Interceptor Frigate. We should have our Stealth Bomber. We should have the, um, the Secondary Frigate, like the Rifter and that kind of thing, the E-War Frigate. And we should have p possibly even some something like the Burst 3, the Bantam 3. Six frigates up at tech level 10. Possibly even get rid of the Stealth Bomber and just keep that as uh, tech level 9, because the tech level 9 ones would be great if the torpedoes could just hit. So there we have it. That's my opinion. So I'm rambling on now. This topic gets me angry. It makes me sad. I, I think there's so much this patch could be, and I'm just hoping that NetEase listens to the changes and makes this game as exciting and awesome as I know it should be. Anyway, folks, you probably have a lot to say um, in regarding to my opinions here. You probably have your own opinions. Tell me I'm right or wrong, yada, yada, yada. Please do let me know in the description down below, at the, uh, the comment section down below, sorry. And of course, do get onto Discord, onto the Eve Echoes official community Discord, give feedback, or open up the AI here, go into the Q&A section there, and start giving feedback there as well. There's all kinds of crazy things you can do. Get your voice heard, be polite about it, but make your voice heard, and together we can make Eve Echoes a better place for us all. Anyway, folks, thank you for listening to this long, rambly sorry it's so negative, um, video right the way to the end. Happy sailing, and see you in New Eden.